It's been a long walk. Bring me your feet, tender from the journey. Let me care for you. Sit with me. Rest. Friends, there is something I must go through, a path I must follow, a way of life I have been asked to reveal. Fear has gone viral. People are hungry and bloodthirsty. They're calling for my life, and I will deliver. But I am not leaving you alone. I give you to one another to love and to cherish. There is nothing more important. This is my parting gift, a holy meal. Take a cup of my essence and a handful of bread. Let us bless the richness of God's love, the deep well of divine mercy, and the gift of being. I hope that you remember me. Remember us. Come and take and eat and share. Share with everyone. Call them to the upper room. Give them a seat at the table. Pray with them in the garden. Pass on all that I've given to you. Give it all away. Come and take and eat. Come and take and eat. Come. As we acknowledge the land this morning, let's ground in this moment, in this space, wherever you are. I invite you to pause, take a breath, close your eyes, feel your body, feel the force of gravity rooting you where you are. And now notice the land itself, feel how it is supporting us. This land gives us bread and wine. It feeds us. It gives us space and strength to sustain and deepen our spirits. How might we learn from this land, this land that Jesus walked on? Could we learn to give as freely as it gives to us, as freely as Jesus gave in turn? Locally, here on Turtle Island, we recognize that this land has been home to indigenous peoples for thousands of years. They lived and thrived here long before European settlers came and drastically altered their lives and the life of the land itself. We are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. On this land, this earth that Jesus lived and walked on, his footsteps call to us still, calling us to love and cherish one another and to cherish the land itself. The light of Christ stands as a reminder to this call to follow him, to express love through service and generosity, to stand in solidarity with the oppressed for the sake of peace and justice. I pray that this light reminds us of our responsibility to one another, listening and learning, challenging and changing the status quo, giving of ourselves, sharing what we have. And that light, it shines wherever you are on whatever piece of land you find yourself joining us this morning. We are holding space to be a community in a new way. We are a community that doesn't vote the same, think the same, love the same, but is trying our best to be followers of Jesus in a way that doesn't do harm, but shows that love and leads into that peace. I invite you this morning to breathe in of your own story and know that there is room for it in this community. May the connections that we make during this time strengthen this worship to be 
a place of good news and word for our community and for the world. Let's worship God together.
As James lights our memorial lights, I want you to notice our table. I wonder who it is you wish was sitting down to share a meal with you this morning. Because the cloud of witnesses is with you. We light the lights in honor of those who have taught us about generosity and service, who've lived the gifts of the Spirit and nurtured in us the way. And so let that light surround you you gather your own bread or juice or what you will use to share in the meal together later in the service. But know that the lights of memory call us to this time of now. Every 
Listen anew to the scripture story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, which comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard that his friend John had been beheaded, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go to the villages and buy something to eat. Jesus said to his disciples, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them to me. Then Jesus ordered the crowds to sit in groups on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven And he blessed and broke the loaves. And he gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And the disciples took up what was left over and put them in baskets. There were 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men in addition to all the women and children. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we pause, having heard this story. We let the characters and the wisdom sink into our minds and our hearts. And we make space so that between the words that are said and the words that are heard, your good news and word for us today may be known. Amen. And so we continue to enter into these stories with the lens of exploring spiritual gifts. And today we look specifically into people who have the gift of generosity, of giving, the special ability to give cheerfully and liberally to support the ongoing work of God. They're able to harness and manage monetary resources in ways that give power to further God's spread of love. They give with simplicity. As described in Romans 12, verse 8, their joy and eagerness are unsurpassed as they follow in the invitation of Christ in Matthew 6, verse 3. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Barnabas is singled out and mentioned in the book of Acts in chapter 4. When it talks about his gifts, we read how he sells land and brings the money to the apostles. Persons with the gift of giving benefit others, and aid the work of God in mending the world. We are here this morning with the legacy of people who saw the possibilities through the use of generosity of offering those gifts to the work of the church. I wonder you who you know who has the gift of giving, who models and lives and finds pleasure and delight in giving to others whether it's handing out food or feeding others, knitting prayer shawls or scarves or hats for the needs of our community, buying ice cream when you hear the truck in your neighborhood call for children nearby. Giving is part of the work of being a follower of Jesus, but for some it comes so naturally like breathing. They take care and intention so that the recipients of the gift are fortified and lifted up. 
that they're strengthened for their work and their gifts. It's not that those who have the spiritual gift of giving have many possessions. Rather, they share what they do have with anyone who's in need. And they don't just give from their excess. They give because of the delight in sharing what they have for meeting the needs of others, their neighbors, and for good in the world. People that have the spiritual gift of giving also recognize that the word give is found in the word forgive. Anne Lamott writes in her book, Small Victories, about struggling with forgiveness and finding a yellowed clipping taped to the refrigerator of a friend during a visit with the word forgiveness at the title. The clipping said, forgiveness means that God is for giving and that we are here for giving too. And that to withhold love or blessings is to be completely delusional. For giving. God is for giving. And God creates us for giving. Wow. And those with the spiritual gift of generosity and giving share this knowing in action and in service. Now, don't think that if you've taken the online quiz or been exploring the spiritual gifts and giving came up at the top that that means you're off the hook and you don't need to be part of this invitation. And you have a little bit of a break because our regular practice of passing the offering plate has now become virtual and you have to take that extra step of putting a check in the mail or dropping it off in the narthex mailbox. The invitation is to pay attention to the ones who stir in us the gifts, who stir in us by modeling what it's like to give without fear and to give generously without keeping track of what's been given and what's come in return. It's an act of discipleship to give. And we've all received so much from God that we can't help wanting to give in return. But those with the giving gift, they give freely with a special measure and delight to further God's work in the world. They see how things connect, that one gift has a ripple to another and another. You also don't have to be rich to have this gift. Remember the Bible story of the widow's might in the Gospel of Mark, where just a little bit makes a big difference. And of course, today's story, Jesus feeding the 5,000. A little boy who provided the disciples with his own packed meal. It's what he had to give. Five barley loaves and two fish that Jesus miraculously multiplied into a feast for 5,000, complete with baskets of leftovers to spare. Writer Rachel Held Evans, she loved this story. She loved that little boy and would often spend hours as a child herself writing about what he might have been like. She imagines what happened to him that day and the day after that and the day after that. What he told his mother when he rushed home breathless with excitement. How he felt when his best friends didn't believe him and why he almost ran away from home so he could follow the miracle working carpenter himself. What an invitation when we hear a familiar story, envisioning the perspective of a single, seemingly minor character. Within this legendary story hides more than 5,000 other stories. The story of the skinny orphan, the skeptical tax collector, the despised Samaritan, the curious fisherman, the struggling widow, the disdained prostitute, the wealthy mother, the angry zealot, the ostracized Canaanite, the banished leper, the suffering slave, the repentant sinner, and ultimately, the story of me and of you. It's the story of a crowd of people who had little in common except that they were hungry for food, for healing, for truth, for Jesus. And it's the story of one brave enough to serve through giving. And it is the story of a crowd of people 
who were fed. No questions asked, no prerequisites demanded, no standards of holiness to meet first. The gospel story that makes the most sense for me about the Eucharist, communion, is this feeding of the 5,000. Jesus didn't ask those thousands of people camped on that hillside whether they'd confess their sins or how clean they were, how ready they were. He fed them. He saw in them the light. And in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, we see Jesus giving what is needed, addressing the most essential physical needs of his fellow human beings, hunger, thirst, companionship, and once again breaking down socially constructed barriers that keep us from eating with one another. He serves the community by bringing them together. He did the same thing, much to the chagrin of the religious leaders, when he dined with tax collectors and prostitutes and told his more well-to-do host that when you give a banquet, invite everyone the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Those with the spiritual gift of giving know how to be a blessing. And this time is calling out of us an invitation to be creative in how we give. The things we took for granted of how we fed people, what it meant to gather people at table, those things we see with a different lens now. But the need and the invitation to give continues to be there. The invitation for us to feed and be fed is there. The people with the spiritual gift of giving are humble in their giving. They hold lightly to what is theirs, And they see the communal in all that's been given. And Islington has been able to expand and grow their ministry because people have moved from mine to ours. They've done that for generations in Christ's name. And we have been led by people who have had the spiritual gift of giving. This is also a place where people have been invited to explore their own gifts, to see that they had this gift of giving and to share it with the world in different ways beyond these walls, beyond our city and more. This morning, the bread and the cup become a symbol of the spiritual gift. At the center of the heart of who we are is the taking and the giving thanks, the breaking, and the giving. The message of hope that our God is for giving, and we are forgiving. And that is bread of life, to be tasted and shared. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. And so we gather aware with the bird song joining Lindsay in this worship of the miracle of creation, of our small part in the story of this universe. And we know that all good gifts are for God's glory and from God. And we are empowered by the Spirit to use them for the mending of the world. And since the world began, God created us to be in relationship. And when we're at this table, we know what relationship means. The English word companion is derived from the Latin calm, with, and panis, bread. A companion, therefore, is someone with whom to share your bread. The act of communion is the act of giving. So when we want to know about a person's friends and associates, we look to them to see who they share a meal with, who they're eating with. And we want, when we want to know a person's social status, we pay attention to where they eat and with whom. We have magazines and people tracking where famous people are finding and gathering at table, what kinds of food they're sharing, what it takes to prepare it, and what the story is of the meal. Most of us prefer to eat with people like ourselves, who share our backgrounds, our values, our economic status, who know our tastes, our ethnicity, our beliefs, Perhaps people we want to be like, people who we look up to, or people who make us feel important or esteemed. Just as an ingredient can change a meal, so can who we share at table with change us. And this is why Jesus' critics repeatedly drew attention to the fact that he dined with the wrong people by eating with the poor and the despised, the sick and the sinners and the outcasts and the unclean, Jesus was saying, these are my companions. These are my friends. It was just the sort of thing that got him killed. Nora Ephron once said that a family is a group of people who eat the same thing for dinner. So when we gather at this table... We eat the same thing for dinner. We remember that when Jesus was with his friends, on that last night as he had so many times before, he took bread and he blessed it. He broke it and he shared it. He said, this is my body, broken for you. Every time you eat this, remember me. And then he took a cup, he poured it, he gave thanks for it, and he shared it. He 
said, this is my lifeblood poured out for you. For giving. Every time you drink this, remember me. All who feast on the bread of life are family. All who dare to feed the hungry and fellowship with the suffering and befriend the sinners are companions of Christ. This, after all, is the kingdom. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered together, not because we are rich or worthy or good, but because we are hungry, because we long for more. And just as the fish and the loaves continue to multiply, so have the companions of Jesus. The family keeps growing and growing. Whoever you are in this ongoing story, this feeding of the multitudes proclaims the hope that we know that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. This invitation if you are hungry, is to eat. You don't have to earn a spot at this table. It is given. The baskets are overflowing, and there's always room for more. For this is not the table of Islington United Church. This is not the table of the United Church of Canada. This is the table of Jesus Christ. The bread of life, the cup of blessing, the Spirit of God upon these gifts and empowering us for the sharing of this meal wherever we are, with whoever we gather. Amen. I invite you to take a piece of bread and to share the cup and to know we are not dining alone. Companions, friends, family, and so much more.
I invite you to join me as we pray together now. Great Spirit, whose voice we hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear us now. We come before you as your children with a taste of your feast fresh on our lips. We thank you for the gifts of the earth, for the abundance of creation, for the generosity of nature. We rely on your strength and your wisdom, God. You give us all we have. Make us wise. May our eyes behold your beauty. May our hands respect what you have made. And may our ears be sharp to hear your voice. Help us to learn to give as you do and to live in harmony with one another, just as Jesus taught us in prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wampum is a camp that takes place here in Ontario and Nietzsche takes place up north in Winnipeg for non-Indigenous and Indigenous youth. And this year we brought them together in one group, so it's really been um, interesting to see them meld together. It's like a summer camp together, so you can kind of make new friends and just kind of learn a little bit more about Indigenous culture that you don't know about. In the towns or the cities that I would live in, I would be the only person that wasn't white. In the morning, we had a talk about residential schools and what it was like for the children to return for, to the families and them not being able to speak the same language. Well, Leanne was talking about residential school and uh, how hard it was to live back then. Like, it was hard to listen to, but it was also nice to hear what really happened from people who have actually been affected by, like, residential schools. The intention is so that they get a brief understanding of how come people view Indigenous people the way they do, how it happened through history, what the events were that led to that, so they understand where we came from and where we're going. Long time ago, these things were sheltered and not ever taught, and it's kind of what they're trying to keep alive is that really strength of the culture and trying not to forget about what's happened We get a lot of pool time. Which is honestly awesome because it's really hot out here and it keeps away the bugs. And it's just a lot of fun because it brings everybody together. <laughs> All right guys, so if I could just get everyone to uh, gather around. We're gonna do a little bit of a safety talk. We're gonna be going on a hike today. We went for a hike on the territory, on the land, and we walked in the bush. We had two of the young males from Grand River Rafting. So up here we have our first plant that we're going to be talking about. And they taught us about certain types of trees. It's almost got like a velvet sort of smoothness to it. Oh, it's smooth. Along the way we tried some berries, some different types of plants that are edible. So that can be used as a dye. It will stain your skin. Mohawks would use this as a, like a war paint. They would paint half their face red with this, the other half black. I'm excited for cooking the fish. We're gonna have a cook-off, cooking trout. Number one, get a fire going. So work together to figure out how to do that. <laughs> we made a fire, and then after that we gutted and cleaned the fish. 
and then you're gonna cut down, cutting the head right off. To uh, cook them over the fire ourselves, and there was a bit of a contest to see who could have the best fish. It was pretty gross, but it was really, it was a really interesting experience because as you're cutting it up, everything is kind of spewing out. It does tie into the tradition. A lot of our people lived on the land, and Mother Earth provided us with these animals to cook and eat. I like the skin. It's just really cool because you get to meet a lot of new people from all over, and you can kind of hear their stories and like how they live and stuff like that. But I think we have a clear winner with uh, the second group we tried. The fish was just perfect. <laughs> so, good job, group number two. I hope the kids go away with confidence. A lot of them are, are very shy and timid and, and in their shell. And for them to open up, for them to smile, makes my day. I've definitely been more social because I'm not a very social person, but I've been more brought out from that shell. What I bring home is memories and friendship and fun. The most important thing for me this week was meeting everybody and making new friends. It was a lot of fun the whole week. A lot of our first year uh, wampum members are still in contact with each other and a lot of them have changed their careers and started studying Indigenous studies, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous uh, former wampum members. So we are seeing a change in the truth and reconciliation and movement towards uh, right relations between our youth and their understanding of what that is. To the people who supported me to get here, thank you for letting me be here. What a gift to see how the church is using their resources to be part of a spirit of generosity and learning. I'm proud to be part of that by being here at Islington United and being part of receiving the generosity that comes from members of community and people who are connecting with us online. I am grateful for the ways that people are offering online. I had a couple from our congregation call and say, Maya, we're going to donate the $300 that we receive from the government being seniors in assistance in that time because we don't need it, but we know that the church will use it for those in need and perhaps you could challenge others to be part of that spirit of generosity so the challenge has been made let's continue to live into this spiritual gift as we go from this place singing let us talents and tongues employ
go from this place with bread enough for the journey and feast to be shared. And may the love of God and the way of Christ find you empowered by the Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.